Welcome, I'm Antonina Antosha and you're watching Head to Head with UA TV. Gas has become a hot topic in Ukraine since the beginning of this spring. The price for annual gas in Ukraine may be lowered if the country stops importing gas, said recently Ukrainian Prime Minister. What does Ukrainian gas market look like now and how it should be reorganized to provide a clearly formed and affordable price for Ukrainians and to support the state energy security? To discuss this, we're joined in the studio today by Olga Belkova, Ukrainian MP and Deputy Head of the Parliament Committee on Energy Complex and Nuclear Safety. Hello, Olga, and thank you for joining us. Hello, Antonina. So, as our Prime Minister uh, uh, Klimkin said, we need to stop importing gas. We focused on the program on increasing the Ukrainian gas production. How much of it is true? How realistic are the plans that were voiced by our Prime Minister? Oh, Prime Minister Groisman is uh, extremely l right in his uh, political call to refocus our attention from political discussions about gas prices into the only possible solution for Ukrainian uh, uh, for Ukrainian citizens to get fair and adjustable market price in the future without any political threats from Russia. And this is to increase our domestic production of gas. Mm -hmm. Let me remind you, uh, 20, 30 years ago, Ukraine was producing uh, by far more than today. What mm -hmm. happened then, back in the uh, 80s, was that uh, Russia, at that point, one of the republics of the former USSR, discovered their new gas um, fields in Siberia, and they abandoned Ukraine. The whole system in the former USSR was restructured, and our industry since then was declining. On purpose, Is I would it due say. to the lack of uh, the uh, financial reimbursement? Well, it was a complexity of different reasons. Mm -hmm. One of them was always that Russia wanted us to be dependent on them for mm -hmm. in our future. Uh, any type of generation in energy you take, we have a bit of dependence on Russia or on anybody else who is around us to produce, uh, to supp uh, supply to us either gas or coal. As of today, we are not, you know, self-sufficient with coal. We have to buy uh, fuel for nuclear uh, nuclear stations. We are interconnected, and it is okay in the current situation. If you are interconnected with some, you know, partners who are friendly, willing, friendly and uh, who are um, acting on, on the basis of European uh, mm -hmm. energy laws. And this is our goal to actually comply with EU laws, to, uh, to become part of the EU markets mm -hmm. and to benefit from the market conditions which are fair and um, and good for Ukrainian citizens and customers. But that was not the case with Russia. Not only we declined our production, we actually almost ruined our state-owned companies. They became so-called black holes of Ukrainian economy. The people of Ukraine were paying subsidies to these companies being coal, fa uh, coal factories or uh, Naknaftagaz or uh, mm -hmm. UGV, Ukrgaz Vydobovanya. All those companies Are we were non the situation now? Uh, the, the, uh, right now, since 2014, we totally reversed this, you know, uh, process. The process, dramatic uh, events for Ukraine, and uh, we joined our efforts with uh, Prime Minister Yatsenyuk in the past, and with Prime Minister Groisman uh, currently on mm -hmm. one set of kind of solutions, complex program, uh, which would offer industry incentives to increase production of gas. And it is possible because Ukraine has enough of reserves of gas. But it's, uh, you know, for, for anybody to understand, gas is not, you know, something you can easily pick on the floor. Yeah, no, it's not a mushroom, you, you actually, of course. You actually <laughs> have to invest a lot capital, resources, technology, you know, you have to have appropriate people, you have to have appropriate conditions for licensing, you have to have uh, permits in place, which are encouraging, not discouraging. And this is what I have been working on personally as an MP for the last three years. Mm -hmm. We accomplished a lot. First, we've changed our fiscal conditions. We anticipated that we are not competitive 
in the region. So we had to change the royalties rate for uh, domestic uh, gas production here in Ukraine. From which to which number did you change uh, it? We currently have a system which provides um, special conditions for new developments mm -hmm. as of 1st of 2018, mm -hmm. which means that anybody who is currently on the market or who is coming to the market for any new well for, uh, will have a st what we call a motivational or stimulational um, stimulus package, which is twice as uh, little as those uh, royalties rates um, which are on the current uh, wells. So we have 27% for the old mm -hmm. uh, wells and we will have um, less for, for the new wells. What else is in the, in the government plan to yes. boost the, the, the gas sector of Ukraine? So our second step was to encourage local communities, people in the regions where uh, gas production is happening. Uh, we've introduced a new measure which will leave 5% of overall royalties inco income to stay in the region. Mm -hmm. This is to prevent people from the region to complain that you know gas production is happening uh, next to their houses, but they do not benefit from it. So as so, of how will they benefit uh, after right this now, five percent staying uh, place? Uh, so right now, I'm gathering information. Many regions, villages, will have millions of greeners coming to their local budget, and they will be able to spend it on schools, on um, you know uh, healthcare, on infrastructural uh, needs of mm -hmm. the village of particular village. That is great. And and, and this is to encourage them to cooperate more with uh, with uh, gas production companies, mm -hmm. be it state-owned or um, private-owned private, uh, companies. Uh, our third and final measure was to change our legislation for land permits mm -hmm. and um, kind of delete all the other permits which are not contributing to the you know fair process of choosing good partner, mm -hmm. but rather the impediments and uh, red tape type of uh, regulations. So that <laughs> was done recently. And with that, I think we've uh, managed to cover the basic crucial needs. But our next step, and we will work with Prime Minister Groisman to have more new licenses being available for our, including our international partners, because I have to say, uh, gas extraction business is business which is based on new technologies. Unfortunately, in our region, we cannot compete with technologies which are available right now in US or in Canada. And we are extremely interested in engaging those partners with uh, proven technology, you know, uh, which allowed US to become um, self-sufficient with natural gas, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, mainly shale gas. But they have abundance of this resource right now. This is what we need to do for Ukraine. Okay. What is the formula for creating the uh, price for the gas right now in Ukraine? Well, right for now, enterprises and for yes, um, um, domestic needs. As of today, we still have two um, approaches which are better than before, but they are still. Uh, we need to improve them. Mm -hmm. We on the market there are two different prices. One is uh, kind of. It, it, it's not even price. It's like an approach to pricing. Uh, free market, you know, decides for how much would each enterprise pay for the gas they consume. I travel across Ukraine and I see it that, you know, each and every factory, those who actually buy a lot of gas mm -hmm. for their, you know, production needs, they benefit from a lot of co uh, competition on the market because it used to be only Naftogaz who was selling it and few of, their, uh, few of the producers right now, Naftogaz is only, I, I think it's a quarter uh, in, in the overall volume of gas uh, sold to the industry. There, I don't know a price because there is not one single price. There mm -hmm. are many different prices depending on the terms of and conditions on the, and volumes and uh, everything as it should be as it is in European market. In okay, any and European what about country. households? The households are still uh, somehow regulated uh, by their uh, cabinet of ministers. Uh, the gas as a good, as you, um, as commodity is included in our tariffs for me, for you, in utilities uh, bills for uh, heating. 
but mm -hmm. the cabinet of ministers is regulating the formula which uh, at one point it was very close to market conditions mm -hmm. to to market uh, um, uh, rules price formula. it's based on the import parity which means that the the price is taken from one of the uh, most you know um, actively traded hubs mm -hmm. of gas in mm -hmm. europe and then we add transportation because we actually transport gas per our agreements, regardless of technicalities of what is really happening with each molecular of gas. Mm -hmm. But the gas has to be bought at a specific place in Europe and it has to be transported via a system of uh, our neighbors or um, via our own system. Mm -hmm. So it has to include transportation costs as of today. To, to, for your information, we consume, we as a country, we consume uh, about 33 uh, billion cubic meters of gas. We produce 20. No, uh, on um, annually. Okay. Uh, 33 billion uh, cubic meters. We produce 20. So we're we, like another 13. Yes. We need to increase our own production by this number. We need to decrease consumption of gas. We need to start exporting gas to Europe. Those are our strategic goals, which we are kind of unite our efforts with Prime Minister. Speaking about Europe and strategies, um, what about the Nord Stream 2 project? It's a very controversial project. Uh, born by Russia, if if I might say so, mm -hmm. and um, of course the political elite of Ukraine, headed by our president Petro Poroshenko, has asked the European Community to uh, pay attention and to make up their minds and to voice their opinions about this controversial project. What do you think? How much how much of a harm would the Nord Stream two project be to Ukraine and to European Union? Exactly. Exactly. I, I think it's. Everybody right now who is not biased towards <laughs> kind of uh, uh, friendship of Russia sees direct implications of this project being in yeah. place. Not only it is extremely dangerous for Ukraine because of our uh, financial expectations, we actually have a very valuable asset which will become obsolete if this project and Turkish stream are in place, we only have very limited capacity left uh, for for our uh, route, unless we increase our own uh, mm -hmm. production substantially, which may happen, but uh, we, which we have will to be, happen, but just not yes, right now. Yes, right? but uh, not right now. We need to be realistic. Uh, on annual uh, basis, we have about two to three billion dollars coming because of transit of Russian gas to uh, through Ukraine, mm -hmm. through Ukrainian pass to our budget. This is substantial. This yeah. is incredible amount in terms of our economy. So this is one consideration. The second strongest consideration is um, security consideration because right now this uh, pipeline across Ukraine is actually uh, somehow you know limited ab uh, limiting ability of Russia to be even more aggressive towards mm -hmm. Ukraine because they actually depend on this route to uh, to um, um, supply their gas to Europe. Just last year, we uh, supplied about 93 BCM uh, of gas to Europe. No complaints on European side, no complaint on Russian side, except when the Stockholm arbitration was announced, they became a little bit uh, mm -hmm. uh, panicking, mm -hmm. you know, their re reaction showed to Europe as well that uh, they are not as reliable as they try to present themselves. And, and this plus is they do realize that they're doing stuff wrong. Well, uh, absolutely. But I, I, you mentioned President Poroshenko and I'm very grateful that he takes it very personally. He takes leadership. Prime Minister Groisman is also yeah. contributing. Everybody in this country, not only, but just recently, look, uh, five heads, uh, speakers of the parliaments in our region signed a special um, statement which was initiated by uh, Speaker Parubi. Then 39 senators from U.S. They made a very strong and clear statement uh, on 15th of March appealing to their own executive offices demanding introduction of energy sanction, uh, sanctions, sanctions against uh, <clears throat> Russia because they do understand very dramatic impl uh, implications of Nord Stream 2 being in place. European politicians, uh, every day they 
post uh, public statements in, in press. Uh, European Commission recently, one of the committees uh, suggested directly that all the uh, rules of third energy package should be um, should be uh, applied to all the pipelines, including Nord Stream 2. So I think I see a little bit of um, uh, kind of clearer mm -hmm. understanding right now. Uh, it is my hope that Ukrainian elites will join efforts, regardless of political uh, plans and you know uh, political differences within the country. Nord Stream 2 and our fight against it is one project which should definitely unite all political uh, politicians in Ukraine. Well, we are on the right track as I have, as you have assured me. Thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for sharing this information with us. My pleasure. Thank you. That was Olga Belkova, Ukrainian MP. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned with UATV.